Okay, welcome everyone to uh, King Saul's Mines. Level 13 in the game. Uh, first thing I always do is get out here and shoot these snakes immediately. Just blast them away. There's a couple snakes in here. Hide behind pillars and such. Oh, fuck you. Just fucking die. Okay. You can kill this guy up here, I guess, if you really want to. That, this actually leads nowhere. It just leads to the upper part of the track. I don't know why it's there to begin with, but it's there, so... Okay. This is actually the second time I'm recording this. I recorded it once already, and my computer fucked up and lost the recording. So, I'm gonna try and do it even faster this time, because at least I know what to do this time. So, uh... Controls on the minecart. You can get in and out using the action key. Uh, you go forward by pressing the up arrow and slow down and stop using the back arrow. You can even reverse going backwards. Uh, and you can also crouch by hitting the crawl key or C, which you're going to need in a few sections in this level. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to take this cart until you find this building right here. You can get out here. And this building is the main control point of this entire level. Enter the door here. Ugh. We'll get a little cutscene. But yeah, I had the whole thing recorded, and she just erased itself on me. Fuck. Disappointing. Electric power. I can't switch the track. Disappointing. So this is the main hub of the entire level. Um, the entire level takes place on railroad tracks, as you might have guessed, and this schematic basically shows you where the tracks are connected and which way they're pointed. Uh, with these switches, you can switch the tracks up where the numbers are, but we unfortunately do not have power right now because they're, they are missing a fuse, a fuse, uh, fuse box. So our first order of business is to find that fuse so we can start switching these tracks around and getting busy. Uh, there's also a trauma kit on the desk here, I almost forgot. A medical kit. And there's this weird picture of a kid with an indie hat mm. on. Good looking kid. I, I'm guessing it's one of the devs kids or something and they just added in an easter egg into the game. Do a lovely front flip off the stairs and let's continue on to find that fuse box. You don't want to keep going until you end up in this room here. And you're going to be faced with two doorways. Uh, the first one you're going to want to go into is this large one here. And turn left and you're going to see some TNT. You're going to want to make sure you're far enough back and then blow it to hell. And you're going to find the first treasure of the level, this silver idol in a corner right here. An idol. An idol. A triangular piece of metal. Ah, uh, you can either climb up on that wood pallet outside, or you can just crawl underneath this pillar, which is what I usually do to get to this next section here. Um, you can't actually do anything in this area yet, but I'm going to show you anyway, because it shows you kind of what the main idea of the level is here. You're going to come into this massive room right here. So this kind of gives you a hint as to what this level is going to be about. You can see that there's a spot here for something. We're going to have to collect that during the level. And you're also going to notice that there are three colored doors. A red door, a green door, and a blue door up at the top. And our objective of this level is to collect three colored gems in those colors to place them in those doors, and that's going to open up the pathway to level 14. So that's going to be our main... Uh, goal of this level is to find those gems. Uh, before we leave this area, climb over these boxes here and you're going to find treasure number two. This blue gem tucked away in the shadowy corner over here. And when you come down here, this looks interesting. he's going to comment on this box Whoa, sitting here. And if you open it up, ah. it's going to spit out the fuse that you need. Amazing coincidence. Even more amazing, it still works. So now we got a fuse and we can start switching these tracks over. So keep taking this cart around. 
You can get out here and switch the tracks if you want, but I like going around one time because it allows you to pick up a treasure before a bunch of Russian dudes arrive and they're shooting at you and everything. So you're going to cross this chasm here. Uh, what you should do is stop. Get out of your... Oh, for God's sake. Get out of your thing. There you go. You're going to find a small med kit resting on the edge here. First aid. And if you follow these tracks back across on foot, you may notice that there were a couple of snakes on the side here when we passed. And they are going to lead you to treasure number three, another blue gem. You get the treasures in this level actually fairly quickly. It's just the uh, jeweled eyes or the colored eyes, the gems that you have to get that take a while to find. Okay. So now we got that part done. These are the ducking parts I was talking about. You got to duck underneath these pipes, or you're gonna clang your face on them, and it takes away quite a bit of damage. Okay. So now we are back. Nope. Now we are back to the hut here, and now that we have a fuse, we can start switching these tracks around. Put the fuse back in here and watch him de-electrocute himself. Oh, fuck. That's rough. So now we can switch all of these levers around with the exception of four, which is stuck for us right now. Hmm, this one doesn't work. Maybe the switch is stuck. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get that unstuck later on in the level. Uh, the ones you want to pull right now are number one. And then you're going to pull, want to pull number three as well. And that's going to create a circular loop on the outside of the tracks. So you can see that the tracks are all switched, so we're going to be running alongside the outside of the mine, mine tracks right now. And that's what we want to do for right now. Quick saving a lot in this level. And so we're going to ride down these tracks and see what we can find. Go past this room for right now. We don't have anything to do in here at the moment. Right up this ramp. And this is going to trigger, trigger the arrival of the Russians. Volodnikov and his commies are going to come in here. and You'll be fighting them for pretty much the rest of the level. So that's why I like to collect as many treasures as I can before they come in here and start shooting the place up. Polodnikov and his bald ass head. I think that's like the fourth time he said that in this game. He just keeps repeating himself. Okay. So keep following this straight through until you come to number four. And this is the one that was stuck, if you remember. So we can investigate it. I can't throw this switch. And no wonder. It needs some grease. So we need some oil or some grease to be able to flip that track piece around. Uh, but before we go, you're going to want to become behind this column to find treasure number four, another blue gem. You can get back in this cart and continue on. So this part right here, there's a ton of spiders. It's not safe to get out here. That wants your face. Um, you don't need to get out here, but I do because there's a small med kit here that I like to grab. Hey. First aid. And then I like to just kind of go back down the road and kill all these spiders. You don't need to. There's no real reason. They can't actually uh, touch you when you're in the cart, but I like just coming back here and doing it anyway, just in case. Okay. All of them. I think that's all of them. So now we can return back to the cart. Like I said, that's totally optional. Oh, this one right here. I didn't even see him. It's totally optional. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. I just like to, just because I like killing spiders mostly. So get back in our cart and continue on. Remember to always duck under these pipes. They take a good deal of damage away. You also have to time your ducks right. If you hit it too early, he'll pop back up and continue to crack his head. Once you reach the number two switch, you're going to want to stop the cart and turn around, and you're going to find treasure number four here, this green gem. 
And you're also going to find a trauma kit back here behind these metal slats or pallets or whatever you want to call them. And we're going to continue moving forward. Underneath more pipes. We'll pass number three and this is going to trigger, or no, this, sorry, this won't trigger a cutscene yet. We're going to get to this room here. And, uh... Right before you go through the door here, you're going to want to stop and start reversing. I don't really like this part because there's no hint that you can do it. But you can actually back up and you're going to switch tracks here. And we're going to need to because that's the only way to get through this door behind us. And we need to get through that door in order to advance the level. There's also a poison kit here if you want it. Climb up here. It's hiding by a skeleton up on this upper platform here. Uh -huh. But yeah, I don't really like this, this part because you wouldn't really assume that you could back up and switch tracks on this cart, but you can. And that's the only way to get to this part of the level, which is kind of stupid in my opinion, but it is what it is. So now we can get out here and it's going to take you to this area with two waterfalls and a bunch of floating boxes. Um, these jumps can be kind of tough, but if you do standing jumps to all the boxes, you shouldn't have too much trouble. And you're going to want to maneuver your way over to this waterfall on the left. Take out your whip and swing right through it. It's not playing the chime anymore, and I don't like that. And we're going to find the Eye of Horus, which we're going to need to open that door at the end of the level. And swing back out. But before we leave this area, there's a couple things we need to get. You're going to want to dive in, first of all. Swim down here underneath this right waterfall, and you're going to find treasure number five, a red gem. Well, that's treasure number six, I believe, sorry. And there's also an opening here, as you may have noticed. We're going to want to take this down into the underwater passage. Right away, you're going to want to swim up to these bars here where you're going to find treasure number seven, this green gem here. And then we can go the other way. And where these fallen blocks are, there's actually a room right above them. And that's going to lead you to treasure number eight. Like I said, you get all the treasures incredibly fast in this level, if you're doing my way anyway. It's going to be another gold idol. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to get all the treasures pretty fast on this level, but it's those gems that take a while to get. They require a lot of setup in order to find the correct path, so that's going to be our main issue slowing us down here. So that's all there is for us down here. You can swim back out. And we can continue riding on the minecart. And this is going to trigger a cutscene of another one, or another cutscene. The Russians have also found the minecart, and they have a machine gun in theirs. So I just usually stop and let them go on their merry way, so I have time to kill these fucking guys here. There's this guy with a semi-automatic pistol. There's another dude up on the boxes throwing grenades at you. There's a snipe shot. And there's a couple guys in here as well that you need to take care of. This guy's got a machine gun. And there's another guy in the other part that has a pump-action shotgun. Which is never a good thing. You don't... Ah, oh, Jesus. I wasn't ready for you. Leave me alone. I forgot that this guy's also in here. So there's this guy, and then you can choose to kill this other guy or not. He is waiting in the final room here. And he's kind of set up an ambush. He's hidden along the right wall. Damn, you got a shot off. Uh, so you can choose to kill him now or when you come back to this room later in the level. 
I just kill him now to get him out of the way. But it's up to you. Uh, there's going to be a couple more guys that show up here later on, but I don't usually worry about them until I have to come back here at the end of the level. So you can climb up on this box here and you can get uh, the grenade that that dude was carrying. And you can also get some uh, satchel charges. Which are more useful than the grenades, but still not very useful in my opinion. Um, they're basically grenades that you can lay on the ground and choose when to detonate instead of random throwing. So, it's up to you whether you want to use them or not, but they're there for you. Okay, so we're going to come back to this section here. There's going to be a couple more guys shooting at you. You can take them out. There's going to be a guy down there. He stops running. Nice. There's also going to be one of those big dudes inside this house here. I don't know why he was shooting straight at me. It's kind of a waste of his ammo and mine, but oh well. Jump down here, get their weapons. Don't have to, I guess, but extra ammo is always good. This guy doesn't drop anything, does he? I always forget about that. Uh, that little green dot you see going around, that actually shows you where that cart that was chasing us is at the current moment. Um, oddly enough, it never actually shows up for the rest of the level if you let it just get ahead of you. Which is odd. I don't know if it's like a limitation of the game or just a bug, but... If you let them just drive off screen, they never actually appear in any part of the track. They're just gone for the rest of the level until we do something about them. So these guys decide to blow up this... this I don't know what the hell they were trying to do. They timed it really poorly. Because it wasn't anywhere near us, but whatever. There's going to be a couple more guys down here you can shoot. Grab their guns. Fucking idiots, I guess. Aren't these guys supposed to be, like, the fucking Spetsnaz or something? Aren't they supposed to be, like, really well-trained? These guys are not. Avoid that lightning, as you can see. Uh, if you're standing near it when it goes off, it'll get you. They did open up this cage, though, and that's going to give us access to this bronze key, which we're going to need later in the level. It's wonderful. This level is all about riding the right tracks and triggering the right events. So, for that reason, I find it kind of hard and confusing. So, you're just going to want to keep following these tracks until we trigger another cutscene a little further on up the road, which we're going to need to do. Oh, right, there's these guys here, too, I forgot about. Again, you can choose to clear these guys out or not. I got a shotgun, so make quick work of these dudes. You don't even really need to kill any of these guys. They don't do a whole lot of damage while you're in the cart, but I just they're just annoying to me, so I like to get rid of them when I can. I have to go through this whole section with the pipes again. Yeah. And we're going to trigger another cutscene heading back into this room here. They've got some bazookas that they can't aim with at all. We just do some crazy action sequence. So we got a couple guys in here. Uh, you will have to come back to this room. Jesus. These guys just don't want to die. That guy's just running all over the damn place. Um, this also gives you access to the bazooka as well. If you didn't pick it up in the last level, you can pick it up here. Let's well start using some of these medicinal springs, I suppose. Um, and it may not look like that cutscene did anything, but what it did do is important. Uh, it actually blew a hole in this wall here. Blew two holes in the wall. And we're going to need those holes to exist in order to progress in the level. Is there no one else up here? I thought there was. Oh, maybe not. Okay. 
But that's why you need to trigger that cutscene, because you need those two holes to be in the wall uh, in order to progress. Which again is kind of annoying. But it is what it is. And we can continue forward into this next room when there's going to be even more dudes shooting at you. Ugh, leave me alone. And one guy is chucking grenades, so be aware of that. Oh yeah. The grenades, they don't have a very big blast radius, but if you get caught close up to one, they do a lot of damage, so... You watch out for that. Snipe this guy. There we go. They're all dead. There'll be another guy popping up here toward the end of the level with even more grenades, but... You can... I tend to just avoid him. Because he's not worth my time and effort. First aid. So I have another grenade anywhere around him? No? Perfect. Okay, so now we can come into this little shack thing. There's another trauma kit on the table here, and some more satchel charges. I guess if you just love using them. I'll use another one of these. Um, and this door is actually locked, but that's what we have the brass key for. And that's going to give us an oil can. What have we here? Which we're going to be able to grease up that uh, line at number four with. So that's great. Progress. Making progress. Come back through this room again. And you're going to find yourself back at the shack. And now we can flip the uh, switch again. The next switch you're going to want to flip when you come in here is number two. That's going to give us access to the interior part of the railroad tracks here. So that's always nice. But you can easily see, if you didn't know what to do, how confusing this level would be flipping all these triggers and flipping all these tracks when you didn't, like, when you had no idea what you were doing. You can easily see why it would be so confusing. So let's ride this to the number four switch right here. Now that we have oil, we can unstick it so we can move this track later on. Now well, let's see if that changes my luck. Wonderful. So once we get back to the house, we can switch, we can switch, uh, switch number four, I suppose. We can flip it, and we can see what's down those tracks as well. So now that we've changed number two, we'll be taking this other track in here. And you're going to find yourself in this lovely area here. You can get out of the cart. There's going to be another hey. trauma kit here on these boxes. There's nothing in the water except for an opening, which you're going to want to swim down. It's kind of hard to see in here, but once you hit this part, if you turn to the right, you're going to find treasure number nine. This red gem here is sitting in the corner. And we can follow this twisting tunnel to the next area we need to be in. And that is this one here with the blocks. Surface in here. And just jump up these platforms here. So this is why we needed that cutscene to happen where they shoot the bazookas at us. Because if you didn't, uh, this block wouldn't exist. It would just be a solid wall here, and you wouldn't be able to get any further up into this room. So that's why you need that cutscene to occur. It does actually progress the level. Even though it doesn't look like it did anything. So you're just going to want to work your way up to this platform here. 
into this triangular opening that you see at the top. And that is going to lead us to our very first colored gem, this green gem up here. Hmm. One of King Saul's jewels. Wonderful. And I usually just like to roll into the, the water here back into this room so we can easily get back to our minecart. Uh, that other tunnel you saw down there, it just leads to the pool underneath the minecart tracks that got blown up. And you can't actually do anything there anyway. You can't get out that way. So it's totally useless to you. Duck under some more pipes. This is the guy that's going to continue to throw grenades, but he doesn't ever hit you, so I just ignore him. I ignore this guy too until the end of the level. So now we're back here. Nope. And now we can flip switch number four. Now that we've oiled it up, we can change the track there and we're going to get another little cutscene. Pretty funny cutscene, honestly. We can finally deal with that minecart that has not been seen for this entire level. These guys just took the one-way ticket to Painesville. That was really stupid of me to say. That was really awful. We're on the pain train right into a wall. Boom. Better throw this back. Amazing. Be safe. Fuck. So that's going to open up that section of the track to us, which is where we need to go next. There's also a dude that appears on this cliff here just to shoot at you and be a general asshole. Take care of him. And now we can continue on the way. Stop and get this guy's rifle if you want. Might as well. Ammo's pretty plentiful in this level, but in the next level it's not. So take the opportunity while it's here, I guess. And now we can ride this track all the way back to that split in number four again. And that's going to lead us to this section here with a couple more Russian dudes. One guy with a shotgun. I got my own shotgun, bitch. Eat shit. There's another guy hiding back here. Nice miss. You're wasting my shotgun ammo, Indy. Fuck's sake. There I go. So we can't actually take the minecart up this track. He doesn't go there. Um, but we can just walk up this track, so it's fine. There are a couple of guards and spiders up here, though, though, so be aware. <coughs> nice. Sorry about that sneeze. God. It must be spring, because I'm sneezing like crazy these days. There's a couple of spiders up here. Take care of them. And we can run past this area where they broke through the boards, which is what we needed them to do. And well, we can this isn't the end of the line. whip our way across this broken section of track. I almost walked right the fuck off. Don't do that. And now we can enter into this area where there's another spider here, I believe. Yes. Perfect. And there's a breakable wall here. Boosh. Just destroy some poor guy's coffin. Why did it have to be World renowned archaeologist just destroying ancient historical artifacts. Seems to be a theme in this game. Kill all these snakes. They're pretty easy to kill. One guy wedged himself back here. There we go. This guy is like jittering in and out of reality back here, so that's wonderful. And we're gonna find our second gem, the blue gem here. Uh, another jewel. Beautiful. Beautiful that indeed. One. But you're gonna be standing on a trap space, so make sure you don't fall into the spikes, because that'll be rough. 
That snake's still jittering to hell. And we can crawl our way back out of here. Continue following the tracks right to their end. And you're going to find the final treasure of the level. This green gem right back here. So we've got all ten treasures. Now we just need to find one last gem and we are done. Whip our way across again. Hopefully not walking over the edge onto the deadly chasm. And head back to the minecart. There's sometimes a couple spiders on the way back, so just keep your gun ready. Fuckers. I hate them. I hate them all. Ruining my progress. One more. Oh. This guy decided he wanted to come down and say hello as well. Fuck you. How about that? How's that for a greeting? Okay, now we can take the minecart and head on into this next section here. This is exactly where we want to be. There's nothing in that room in front of us, so you're just going to want to come back here and climb up onto these boxes so we can get onto this platform up here. And you can see that this box is concealing an entranceway, so just push it out of the way. And this is going to lead us to some explodable barrels that we can take care of. Also a couple spiders. This spider up here is a dickhead. He killed me last time while I was climbing the ladder because he didn't want to kill me, but he bit me because he didn't want to come down. He's going to do it again, isn't he? Whatever. Might not be any way to avoid this piece of shit. I guess if you just want to jump off the ladder, but I don't. Fucking, like, he's so far away. I don't know how he bites you. Fucking asshole. Is he gonna just hide there? Eh, we'll take care of him after. So there's a nice bottomless pit here, so let's not end up down the bottomless pit. Just jump to this platform in the middle. You can shoot another spider and watch him fall down the pit instead. Make your way over here. I believe there's another spider on the other side of this web. Come on, I know you're there somewhere. No? Hmm. There usually is. There he is. Fuck! They're ambushing me in this level, and I don't appreciate it at all. I sense a trap. And here we have our final gem of the level. But once you pick it up, the roof's going to start collapsing on you. So run into that hole as soon as you can. Also, there's a couple of snakes down here, so be prepared for that. But they're pretty easy to kill before they bite you. They're not a huge deal. And we can crawl our way out. And we are pretty much done. We just got to put these gems back where they belong. In the doorway section there. Couple of webs to cut through. And we can jump back to that middle platform. <laughs> Wonderful. Remember there's a spider down here that I left. Where'd he go? Did I kill him? Oh, maybe I did kill him. Okay. hear him still. There he is. What a dickhead. These spiders are starting to get smart. I don't like it. I can't believe he actually crawled out into this other room to wait to kill me. That's garbage. I've never seen that before. That's total shit. Oh well. I can rip through this room one more time. Rip through here. This guy's going to continue to throw grenades at us, and we are back where we need to be. A bit with one dude here. Turn him down real quick. Take his weapon. And we can go put these gems in where they belong.
I don't think there's anyone down here, but I'll get my gun out just in case. Perfect. Okay, so let's put the Eye of Horus where it belongs to start things out. That's going to raise this up so we can get to the next doorway. I'm just going to have to go around putting these gems where they belong, one by one. Put the red gem in first. It fits. And that's going to continue to raise up this middle platform here. See if I can make this jump properly. Nice. That was a fantastic jump. I'm gonna give myself applause for that. There's my applause for myself. And this is going to release that arm with another crystal on it. And I don't think I need to repeat why I hate the, those crystals. But I will anyway, because maybe somebody didn't watch the last video. But there's something that just bothers me about... This is the only location in the entire game where you need the... Or you require a previous part in order to complete... You could argue that Ergon's part, like, you needed it to progress in earlier levels, but I can kind of believe that because, like, these places are, like, thousands of years old. I can believe that crumbling walls would exist. But this is the only place where, like, things are actually designed around uh, parts that you previously needed to get. And that just rubs me the wrong way. Because, like, imagine if we came here first... And we did all of this dumb bullshit, only to find out that we couldn't complete the level because we didn't have Azrim's part to zip up there. We got all the gems, we got everything, but we weren't able to complete the level because we didn't have that stupid part. Like, wouldn't that be a piss off? But, game design, I guess. So you're just going to want to take this elevator down to this corridor here, whip across the pit, and that is going to end the level. Whew. Into King Nub's tomb we go. Okay. 37 minutes. Alright. Last time I recorded this or attempted to, it was 42, so I shaved like 5 minutes off my time. Good stuff. So, 10 treasures found. All that good stuff. So yeah, um, once you beat this level, you can give yourself a pat on the back or a nice little hand there because you just finished, in my opinion, the two hardest levels in the game. Um, this level, even though I finished it in 37 minutes, can easily take over an hour if you get lost. Um, the thing with this level is that a lot of the progress depends on triggering events that you have no hint that like, need to happen, right? Like, you need to trigger basically three events to progress in this level. You need to trigger the arrival of the Russians. You need to trigger that explosion in the electrical room. And then you need to trigger the two guys shooting bazookas at you just to get the uh, items that you need to complete the level. And that's, like, kind of shitty to me because there's no hint or clue that these scenes like even exist right so as someone playing this level for the first time i can easily see how you'd be incredibly confused as to how to progress um because you'd have no idea that these scenes even exist in any capacity the one that's really awful is that bazooka scene that sh busts two holes in the wall because the problem is you can actually get into that room before you are able to see that scene right you can get into that room the problem is you won't be able to go anywhere in there right and i can imagine people just by sheer luck of not taking that specific route not seeing that cutscene, and they would have no idea how to get that last gem because they wouldn't know that that cutscene even exists or that they need to trigger it in order to get it and to me, that's just kind of shitty because there's nothing based off of hints or clues or anything. It's just, 
sheer luck that you went down those tracks when you were supposed to to unlock different sections of the level as you progress, basically. But uh, ironically enough, this is actually one of my favorite levels in the game because I love the kart racing, zipping around on the tracks. Uh, I think it's a really cool level. It's really unique from the rest of the game, obviously. This is the only level you use the minecart in, aside from that like one section last level for like five seconds, which doesn't really count in my opinion. So I think this level is pretty cool. A lot of action, a lot of cool set pieces. Uh, but yeah, once you finish this level, you're pretty much done the two hardest levels in the game, which is this one and the previous one. The next level, Nub's Tomb, it's not nearly as long as these two levels, and it's much more straightforward, although there are some difficult combat sections, some enemies you have to fight, and there are a few sections where you can get confused as to what to do, but for the most part it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's also the resting place of the last machine part, and uh, obviously the final or the second last boss. So, yeah, stock up for that, I guess. Um, you might need some medical supplies after this level, just depending on how many times you got hit. I'm doing pretty well right now. Um, I might buy some auto pistol rounds. I should really start using my submachine gun more, because I got tons of bullets for it. Uh, you can also buy satchel charges now, but... I really don't like any of the explosive weapons in this game, honestly. I've already explained why I didn't like the grenade. Um, it's hard to, to use accurately, and its blast radius sucks, so you, you're just wasting them most of the time. Um, the bazooka rockets I also don't really like because there's very few situations in which the bazooka is actually useful. Most of the time when you pull it out in like an enclosed room or a tight space, it just ends up hitting a wall and either killing you or seriously damaging you in the process. The satchel charges, again, like, they're more used for setting up, like, traps and stuff, like, luring guards to them, but I don't really play that way anyway. I'm more of a run-and-gun kind of guy. I much prefer just to blow them away with a shotgun or the machine gun or something like that, rather than plan out a trap for them with the satchel charges, but they're there if you do want them. So, yeah. So that was uh, King Saul's Mines. A pretty fun level in my opinion, uh, but can be confusing and hard for obvious reasons. Uh, so thanks for watching, you guys. Take care, and, and, and I really hope it's recorded because I don't want to have to do this a fucking third time. So take care, guys. See ya.